Hi everyone, I'm Lars from Nice Job. So I'm the CPO at Nice Job, which basically means I build and design products. So what we're going to talk about today is a problem that pretty much everyone here has faced. And uh, it's a problem that we face every day. And that's how do you win more customers for your business? And incidentally, the, the products that we build are all built around winning more customers for your business. So this is something that I'm very passionate about. And hopefully we'll get some, some good uh, insights as we go through our story, how we get more customers for a business. And we talk a little bit about your story, how you can get more customers for your business. So what I want to do today to start things off is uh, I want to do a little exercise with you. So if you have a piece of paper and a pen, or even if you just have a tablet or any kind of notepad, I want you to write down how many customers that you have today. So just rough estimate, you know, how many customers you have today. I want to write down mine here. And then I want you to put a little arrow beside it and write down how many customers you want to win during 2022. So your goal. Okay, so here's mine. This is for our nice job product line. So today we have about 6,000 customers and during 2022, we wanna win about another 6,000 customers. So roughly double. Today we're gonna to talk for the next 20 minutes about our playbook for how we're gonna how we're gonna do this, how we're gonna accomplish this. And hopefully we can uh, use some of these lessons for your playbook for how you can do this for your business, meet your goals during 2022. So what are we doing to win customers today? So at Nice Job, we're doing a lot of the things that you're probably familiar with. Uh, we do a bunch of paid ads. So we do things like display, paid search, paid social. We don't do LSA ads, that's local service ads, but you're probably familiar with them. So I put them on the list. We do a bunch of content marketing. So we do SEO, we do emails, we do blogs. And we do a bunch of offline stuff, events, direct sales, some traditional media. Now, the reason why we're starting with this is, is not because these are going to be the focus. Uh, these are all good channels for driving growth. Channels that you're familiar with, channels that get pretty immediate response rates, like paid ads, you put money in, you get results out quite quickly. Channels that there's a ton of education around how to optimize. But there's one new method that we want to talk about that can supercharge each one of these channels and that can open up a couple new channels for your business. So we're going to get into that. But before we get into that, we want to talk about a couple of the challenges, especially with paid ads and challenges that you've probably faced with your own business. So challenge number one, leaky funnels. So with paid ads in particular, we have a bit of a funnel mechanism. You get customers at the top of the funnel and then they move through the funnel and all funnels in marketing tend to leak. So you end up with a small num a number of customers that come out of the bottom of the funnel. So let's look at the top of the funnel, for example, uh, in the home and garden industry. If you are running paid search ads, you're getting about a 4% click through rate. So that means that on search if 2,500 people saw the ads, you're going to get about 100 people who actually click through and come to your mid funnel. So if we look at mid funnel uh, websites, you're typically getting around a three or two to four percent conversion rate if you're in the home and uh, service industry. So for every hundred visitors that come to your website, you might be getting about three leads or so, three to four. If you've got a really good optimized landing page, maybe you're getting more than that. And then those people can become leads. Uh, they come through your lead pipeline, whether it's a phone call or a web form. And maybe you're getting 50%, maybe you're getting a little bit higher, but either way, you're, you're only getting about three leads. So out of 2,500 people that come into the top of the funnel, uh, maybe you're getting about three people out the bottom of the funnel. And so what's the point of this? It's that funnels leak. Uh, all marketing funnels leak. It's not a bad thing. It's just what happens with marketing funnels. A second challenge with paid ads is diminishing returns. So what we all like to see with growth is a hockey stick, stick curve, you know, start slow and then, and then grows faster. What we see with paid ads is the opposite. So let's say, for example, that we're investing $10,000 a month into a paid ad channel and we want to double it. We want to invest 20,000 into that paid ad channel. So we double it and we expect double the amount of customers out of it, right? Oh, well, that just doesn't happen. 
As we double our spend, we actually don't get double the output of that spend. We get diminishing returns. And the reason for this is because paid ads act as an auction model. So they follow the laws of supply and demand. Uh, so as demand increases and supply decreases, we actually end up with less output. We don't get a hockey stick curve. We, we get this kind of flattening curve. Uh, a third channel, a third challenge with uh, paid ads, uh, lack of content. And this really applies to all those marketing channels that we talked about at the beginning. So those marketing channels are content monsters. Uh, they, they consume a lot of content. They need constant, fresh, authentic, well-written content for them to perform well. So we've kind of got two choices. Uh, we're either going to spend our evenings creating a, a ton of content or we're going to hire someone else to do it. Either way, though, we, we've got to feed the beast. So we're constantly creating content for our marketing campaigns. So that's all kind of the, the natural nature of most marketing channels. What we want to look at, though, is a way that we can improve that. And, and that's through a new, really old channel. Uh, in all likelihood, most of our companies started using this method of marketing. What is it? We like to call it customer-driven growth. So what's customer-driven growth? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, basically, you make a customer really happy. That happy customer tells their friend, their friend does business with you. It's word of mouth marketing. So most of us started our business with word of mouth. I know with nice job, we got our first few customers. We invested a ton into these customers to make them happy. And those customers brought us all our other customers. So customer driven growth is awesome. And, and we're going to dive into a few reasons why it is so effective for driving exponential growth, for scaling your business. Let's look at a couple of them. Let's look at how it impacts those challenges that we started off talking about. So challenge number one, leaky funnels. So we remember how the tr traditional marketing funnel goes like this and it leaks, people come out of it. And we only end up with a small number at the bottom. Customer driven growth turns that funnel upside down. So instead of being a leaky funnel, we have an expanding funnel. As you get customers into the top and those customers become happy and excited, they tell their friends, their friends tell their friends. So the funnel grows, it doesn't leak, it expands. Remember the scale, diminishing returns that we had before? Well, with customer-driven growth, we have scaling returns. So as we get more customers, it's like that snowball. You know, you take a snowball, you roll it down the hill, it starts really small, and then it grows and grows and grows and grows. That's what happens with customer-driven growth. So you start off with 10 customers, they become 20, they become 40, they become 80, 160, 320, 640. You, you can see how this process keeps going. So th this is awesome. This is what we all want to see for our growth curves, the hockey stick curve, where it starts small and then goes up from there rather than diminishing return curve. And with customer driven growth, we get a continual supply of fresh content for free. Why? Because our customers write it for us. So as we collect the, the, feedback from our customers, the reviews and the content that they create, we can use that to power all our growth channels. And we'll take a look a little bit about how we can do that. The, the great thing about this, though, isn't just the free content. It's that now we don't have to tell everyone that we're the best anymore. You know, for marketing for, you know, forever, um, companies have had to tell other leads that they're the best to try to win sales. With customer-driven growth, you don't do that because your customers tell their friends that you're the best. And, and that's powerful. That's more powerful than anything that we can say about our uh, own service that we provide. So what's our playbook for customer-driven growth? How do we actually create this? How do you create this for your business? We're going to look at, at three steps and how are we creating it, and hopefully how you can create it for your, your business as well. Okay, step one, we need to create experiences that turn customers into fans. So kind of an interesting expression here. Um, maybe you've never thought about 
your customers being fans before. Uh, you think about fans in terms of sports world, you know, the raving fans at a sports game, hockey and football game, you know, Edmonton Oilers fans. But you don't often think about fans in terms of um, a service business, you know, a, a plumber, a landscaper. But fans exist within every company's community. And a fan is somebody who's not just happy with your service, but they're happy about your service and they're vocal. They tell other people about your service. So that's the key with fans. It's not just creating a satisfied customer. It's creating a customer that's so happy that they want to tell their friends. Now, to do this, it, it requires a bit of a change in thinking. Uh, it doesn't happen by itself. It requires conscience, conscious change on our part as a company. We're going to talk about three changes in thinking that are required in order to create experiences that turn your customers into fans. Okay, the first one. Start every decision with what will my customer love? Start every decision with what will my customer love? Decision-making process happens every day as we run businesses. And, and typically, you know, we, we start decisions by thinking, what do I need to do for the best interests of my company? Uh, how do I serve my company's needs? And, and that's an important question because, you know, we, we run companies, so we, we've got to be able to make decisions that are good for our companies. But we want to switch that thinking around to what will my customer love? A Amazon said to have had a seat at the table uh, that was called the customer chair. And before making any decision, they would look at the customer chair and ask that question, what will my customer love? I want to tell you a little story about how this can affect uh, decisions that you make. So our business is a software business. We build products uh, that help other companies uh, grow, get more customers. And within the, the, the genre of software that we work in, um, there's a lot of companies that have made a decision on how they present their pricing. And they've decided that What's best for my business is to hide the pricing that we provide to our customers. And they've done this for, for a couple of reasons that seem very logical, because if they hide the pricing, then the lead that comes to the website has to call in to find out how much it's going to cost. And when they call in, they get on the phone with a really good sales rep. And that sales rep can sell them on the product very easily and decipher how much that person's willing to pay and then adapt the prices accordingly for the given lead that's calling in. So businesses love this, right? You know, more close rate, uh, more margins. So this is good for companies, but is it good for customers? What do customers love? Customers want instant pricing. They don't want to wait. They want pricing that's fair. They want to pay the same thing as their peers. They, they don't want to be taken advantage of. And they want clear expectations. They want to know exactly what's included with their pricing. So in our case, all the gravity was pulling us towards this other way of pricing. But when we asked the question, what will my customer love? The answer was obvious. Put the prices up on the website. Let everyone know what they are. Provide clear expectations of what they're going to get. Don't make them wait. Don't make them call in. So, so that's what we did. And, and the result is that we engender more loyalty and happiness among the customers that we work with. So pricing is something that all businesses uh, have to um, devise strategies for. Uh, can this apply to a typical service industry business? Uh, we start this, the, the question the same. What will my customer love? And in a service industry, Likely it's the same thing. You know, they, they want instant, they want fair, they want clear expectations. So maybe we're in a business where typically it takes days to provide an estimate. You know, we've got to go on site, we've got to be able to see what, you know, the circumstances are and devise an accurate quote around that. And in some cases, there might be not be any getting around that. But if we start with the decision that we're going to base our pricing or our process on customer needs, not business needs, sometimes it can open up innovative solutions to these challenges. We can face that challenge like on-site estimates and find technology that will allow us to provide instant accurate estimates without making a customer wait. 
And the result is we're one step closer to turning that customer into a fan. So this isn't always an easy thing to do. Uh, it could require a lot of problem solving, but the effects are massive. These tiny details of starting decisions with what will my customer love will make a huge impact on our customers and move us towards customer-driven growth where customers tell their friends about their experience with us. So that's the first change in thinking. The second change in thinking we wanna talk about. Don't meet expectations, exceed them. So we, we like providing five-star experiences. You know, we tell our customers what they're to expect from us and then we fulfill it. We, we give them what we've promised. That's a five-star experience, right? But in reality, that's a satisfied customer. It's not necessarily a customer that's going to become a vocal, passionate advocate for your, for your company. What does a six-star experience look like? You ever ponder that? What does a six-star experience look like? You know, I, I asked this question to a friend of mine, uh, Brandon Vaughn, who ran a home service company. And their six-star experience was including something they called plus ones. They deliberately did random acts of free extra services with every client. They offered to change light bulbs, clean mirrors, clean the mailbox, high dusting. They did things that were not expected. They were not included in the scope of the project. What was the result? Brandon said, this blew our customers away and made our techs look like rock stars. They didn't just meet the expectations, they exceeded them. They blew the expectations away. What would a seven star experience look like for your company? You know, a few years ago at Nice Job, one of our clients' uh, son broke uh, a limb. So our team got together. They bought a stuffed animal, they put a fake cast on it, they all signed it, and they, they sent it to that client for his son as a gift. That's a seven-star experience. That so unexpected, such an incredible experience for the customer. And, and what's the result? Well, that customer is now a customer for life. You know, now they're part of your tribe. Now they're not just a happy customer. This is a passionate fan who's going to tell their friends about your, your company and the service that you provide. So can we go beyond that? You know, we think about this exercise of imagining a six-star experience, a seven-star experience, a 10-star experience. Okay, you're a plumber. You're showing up. You've got a barbecue going and you're serving them brisket. 11-star experience, you're inviting Coldplay to play in their front yard. This sounds like fantasy land. We're obviously not going to do this. We're not going to bring them brisket. And Well, maybe you'll bring them brisket. I don't know. If you're a plumber and you came to my house and brought me brisket, I'd be pretty happy. Um, but if we sit down with our team and we, we go through this exercise, however far-fetched it sounds, go through the exercise of creating the picture of what the 10 star experience looks like, what the 11 star experience looks like, and then work backwards, work back towards five and find the point that you can actually deliver it. Maybe it's a seven star, maybe it's a six star, but start at the extreme end, the ultimate experience for your customer, what the, the most magical experience you could possibly create is, work your way backwards towards five. When you find that happy medium, Make that the same experience that every customer gets. Not just exceed, meeting the expectations, exceeding them. And, and the result, that investment into your customer, those customers are going to become fans for life. They're going to tell their friends, you wouldn't believe what this landscaping company did. I, I never expected it. And this is what they did for me. And then those friends are going to call you up and be your customers. One more change in thinking. Uh, Charles Munger, pretty smart dude. Uh, the iron rule of nature is you get what you reward for. If you want ants to come, you put sugar on the floor. So that's true, isn't it? Incentives. If you want ants to come, put sugar on the floor. So what are we talking about here? Well, most of the touch points between a company and its customers happen with your team your employees, 
you know, unless you're an owner operator, most of the, the moments to create great experiences are employee experiences. So we need to empower our team to create exceptional experiences for our customers. And we do that through incentives, verbal incentives, recognize them when they create exceptional experiences, written incentives, you know, shout it out on your community Slack channel or social media channels when your employees create exceptional experiences, monetary incentives, bonuses, gifts, pay structure, incentivize your team to create exceptional experiences. And they will. If you want ads to come, put sugar on the floor. Okay, so that's step one in our playbook. Step two, capture the voice of the customer. So we created great experiences. The customers are talking. Now we got to capture everything that the customers are saying. How are we going to do that? This one's pretty easy. Ask. We have to ask. Ask for reviews. Ask for recommendations. Ask what we can do better. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. So how do we ask? How do we ask for reviews? How do we ask for recommendations? Well, that's, that's uh, something that's pretty near and dear to us since we build products or, around doing this. Um, a couple of the learnings that we've had in building products to ask for reviews and ask for recommendations. One, make sure to ask at the right time. Uh, ask at the moment of peak excitement because that's the time that the highest propensity of the person will actually respond. Uh, two, remove all the roadblocks. If you're asking for a review on a business card or the bottom of an invoice and they got to type in a URL into the browser to leave a review, you've lost them. They're gone. Um, you got to remove the roadblocks, make it seamless, get it right on their device. One click, they're leaving that feedback for you. They're recommending their friend. Make it super, super, super easy. And then finally, remind them. Uh, you know, people need reminders. Recently, I stayed at a great hotel. We had an awesome experience. I would have left them a five-star review. They actually even asked, uh, but I keep forgetting and I still forgot. You know, I'm talking about it right now and I still haven't done it yet. I need a reminder. So why is it that people don't ask? What, what, what keeps us from asking? Often it's fear. Fear that if we ask, they're going to leave us a bad review. They're going to say something bad about our service. But you know, if you don't ask, the only people who are going to leave reviews are going to be the negative people. That's that's what's going to happen. Because the people who are going to leave a bad review, they're going to leave it anyways, whether we ask them or not. You know who's not going to leave a review? It's all the people who've got great things to say. They're the ones who don't leave a review unless we ask. And then when we get the feedback, really listen to it. Take note of what they're saying. Respond to it. Reply. And then use that to feed in your into your great customer experiences, step one of the process. Okay, our playbook, step three, amplify the voice of the customer. We're getting all this feedback. We're getting reviews. We're getting recommendations. We're getting content created by the customer. What do we do with it? We got to get it out to our ad channels. Use it to power your paid ads, to power your content marketing, to power your offline media. If you're going to create a paid ad, Use the voice of the customer. Use a customer review. Uh, we don't need to start keep sh shouting at the top of our lungs that we're the best when our customers are already doing that for us. How does that affect uh, the performance of our ad channels? Well, here's our numbers. So I'll oh, jump ahead one there. Um, since we started using voice of the customer to power our traditional ad channels, we've seen a 15 to 30% increase in ad click-through rates, 10 to 15% increase in website conversion rate, 10% cheaper trials and 180% higher trials, higher organic uh, rankings and higher engagement on social media. These are huge numbers. This is what happens when we use the voice of the customer to do our talking. When we, we quit creating our own content and start using the the, the con content created by our customers, uh, super powerful. And the leads that we're appealing to, they love it because it's authentic, it's real, it's trustworthy. When we do this as well, it introduces two new streams of customers. Uh, the first one is review sites. 
So we've got an example here. You type in landscaping Edmonton. What do you see? You, you see a list of you know local contractors with reviews. Maybe some of the ones listening are on this list here. Who are you going to choose? You can choose the top rated company. So the more that we ask and get that feedback onto these review sites, the more customers we're going to get. And then we also introduce recommendations because as we ask our customers for recommendations, we allow ourselves to have that whole new stream of customers coming in who are recommended by their friend. Uh, this might require a product solution. We build technology that tracks this. We recommend that you use technology that, that tracks recommendations so that you can create a great experience for those who are recommending their friends to use your service. So remember our playbook. Step one, create experiences that turn customers into fans. Step two, capture the voice of your customer. Step three, amplify the voice of your customer. Go back to our uh, exercise for a second. So if you got your piece of paper there still, let's go back to that exercise. You got your goal. Mine was 6,000 new customers. We want to double our nice job product customer base during 2022. How are we going to do this? Well, here's what I've written down on my beautiful little drawing here. These three things. Turn customers into fans. Capture the voice of your customer. Amplify the voice of your customer. Customer-driven growth. This is the recipe, pretty simple recipe. We'd like to encourage you to try this recipe out for your goal. Um, and as you do, we'd love to hear how it goes. So uh, with our, our little speaker card for Jobber, there's some contact information for us there. You can reach out to us on our Facebook group, or you can reach out to me personally through LinkedIn or Twitter. And it's on there. We'd love to hear your experience of how you can use customer-driven growth to build your business. So if you want to acquire more customers at a lower cost and do that while investing in your customers, creating great experiences for them, this is the recipe, customer-driven growth. Thanks, everyone, for your time today. Love chatting with you, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up soon.